In a world where fame was a double-edged sword and Hollywood a battleground, Joan Crawford didn't just navigate the waters, she stormed them. Behind the screen, an epic saga of rivalry unfolded, as fierce as any on-screen drama. Crawford, a titan of the silver screen, found herself locked in battles that were whispered about in the hallowed halls of MGM but seldom spoken aloud. Imagine, amidst the cutthroat competition of Hollywood's golden age, rivalries so intense they could shape careers or obliterate them entirely. Crawford, with a mix of charm and steel, faced adversaries both on camera and off in a relentless pursuit of stardom. As Crawford ascended the ranks of Hollywood royalty, her path was strewn with battles for supremacy, both on the screen and off. These were not mere disagreements, but deep-seated conflicts that shaped careers, defined legacies, and sometimes even altered the course of Hollywood history. Among these, her feud with Bette Davis is legendary, a saga of rivalry and resentment that spanned decades, fueled by competition for roles, accolades, and the affection of the public. But Davis was not Crawford's only adversary. From Norma Shearer's elegance to Mercedes McCambridge's grit, Crawford found herself in a constant struggle for the spotlight, battling not just for parts, but for her place in an industry that pitted woman against woman in a relentless display of one-upmanship. Yet these rivalries were more than mere tabloid fodder. They were reflections of Crawford's unyielding determination to succeed in a male-dominated industry, her refusal to be sidelined, and her complex relationships with her peers. Behind each conflict lay a story of ambition, jealousy, and the harsh realities of stardom. This video delves deep into the heart of Joan Crawford's most shocking rivalries, uncovering the truth behind the headlines and the impact these conflicts had on her career and personal life. From whispered arguments in studio backlots to public spats that captivated the world, we explore the fierce battles that defined one of Hollywood's most enduring legends. Prepare to journey into the past, to a time when stars like Crawford ruled the silver screen and rivalries ran deep. Welcome to Shocking Facts About Joan Crawford's Rivalries. The Origins of Rivalry In the early 1920s, a young woman named Lucille Fay Lesueur stepped into the limelight of Hollywood, marking the beginning of a journey that would transform her into Joan Crawford, one of cinema's most enduring icons. Born on March 23, 1905 in San Antonio, Texas, Crawford's early life was far from the glamour that would later define her. Her ascent from obscurity to stardom was fueled by a relentless ambition and a desire to escape her impoverished beginnings. Crawford's entry into Hollywood came at a time when the film industry was undergoing a seismic shift. The silent era was giving way to the talkies and studios were in a frenzied search for stars who could transcend this transition. Crawford, with her expressive eyes and dynamic presence, quickly caught the attention of MGM, one of the era's most prestigious studios. Her rise to fame was meteoric. By the late 1920s, Crawford had become one of MGM's most bankable stars, embodying the modern, independent woman of the jazz age in films like Our Dancing Daughters, 1928. Yet, as her star ascended, so too did the competitive tensions with her peers. The studio system of the time pitted actresses against each other, often vying for the same roles leading to inevitable rivalries. One of Crawford's earliest and most significant rivalries was with Norma Shearer, the so-called Queen of MGM. Shearer, married to MGM's head of production, Irving Thalberg, enjoyed what many considered preferential treatment in role selection. Crawford viewed Shearer as her chief rival, a sentiment that was exacerbated by the studio's politics and their competition for the same parts. This rivalry was emblematic of the challenges Crawford faced, not just in terms of her career, but in her quest for recognition and respect within the industry. Despite these challenges, Crawford's determination never wavered. She continued to push for more substantial roles, leveraging her popularity with audiences to gain leverage with the studio. Her efforts paid off in the 1930s with critically acclaimed performances in films like Grand Hotel, 1932, and Possessed, 1931. 
which solidified her status as a leading lady of Hollywood. Yet, Crawford's ambition often isolated her from her peers, leading to strained relationships and further rivalries. Her marriage to actor Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in 1929 placed her in direct competition with Douglas Fairbanks Sr. and Mary Pickford, Hollywood's golden couple. The marriage, while elevating Crawford's social standing, also marked her as an outsider within the industry's elite, a position that would fuel both her determination and the rivalries that defined her career. Crawford vs. Bette Davis The rivalry between Joan Crawford and Bette Davis is perhaps the most legendary in Hollywood history, a saga of enmity and begrudging respect that spanned decades and defined both actresses' careers. Their feud was rooted in a complex mix of professional competition, personal dislike, and the intense pressures of Hollywood's studio system. The origins of their rivalry can be traced back to the early 1930s when both actresses were rising stars at Warner Brothers Studio. Crawford, having recently moved from MGM to Warner Brothers, was seeking to reinvent her career, while Davis was establishing herself as one of the studio's most talented and ambitious actresses. Their competition for roles was fierce exacerbated by the studio's penchant for pitting its stars against each other. The rivalry reached its zenith in 1962 with the production of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. The film, which cast Davis and Crawford as aging, reclusive sisters, was a psychological thriller that played on the real-life tensions between the two stars. On set, their feud was legendary. Davis was said to have kicked Crawford in the head during a scene, while Crawford reportedly filled her pockets with rocks during a scene where Davis had to drag her across the floor, making the task as difficult as possible. Despite the animosity, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane was a critical and commercial success, earning Davis an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Crawford, however, was not nominated, a snub that deepened the rift between them. Crawford managed to overshadow Davis's nomination by contacting the other nominees and offering to accept the award on their behalf if they were unable to attend the ceremony. When Anne Bancroft won and was absent, it was Crawford who took the stage, much to Davis's chagrin. The public and the media were fascinated by their feud, which both actresses occasionally played up for the press. Despite their rivalry, there were moments of professional respect between them. Davis once acknowledged Crawford's business acumen and work ethic, while Crawford admitted to admiring Davis's talent. Their rivalry was not just personal but reflective of the challenges faced by actresses of their era. Both were fighting for survival in an industry that marginalized women as they aged. Their feud, while personal, also highlighted the broader struggle for women in Hollywood to maintain their careers, autonomy, and respect in a male-dominated industry. Crawford and Norma Shearer the rivalry between Joan Crawford and Norma Shearer during the golden age of Hollywood is a tale of ambition, studio politics, and the quest for cinematic dominance. Both actresses were luminaries of their time, but their paths to stardom and the nature of their competition were markedly different shaped by the machinations of MGM and the personal dynamics at play. Norma Shearer, often referred to as the First Lady of MGM, was not just a celebrated actress but also the wife of Irving Thalberg, MGM's head of production. This connection afforded Shearer a certain level of influence and choice in her roles that was unmatched by her peers. Shearer's position at MGM was both a boon and a source of contention, as it placed her at the center of studio politics and favoritism. Joan Crawford, on the other hand, arrived at MGM with a fierce determination to succeed. Her rise from relative obscurity to stardom was fueled by her talent and tenacity. However, Crawford often found herself at odds with the studio system, which seemed to favor Shearer. The competition for roles between Crawford and Shearer was intense, with Crawford feeling that Shearer's marital ties to Thalberg gave her an unfair advantage. The rivalry was exemplified in the competition for the role of Elizabeth Barrett in the film The Barretts of Wimpole Street, 1934. 
Crawford was initially considered for the part, but it ultimately went to Shearer, a decision that Crawford saw as a direct result of Shearer's influence within the studio. This incident was a turning point for Crawford, who became increasingly disillusioned with the politics of MGM. Despite the rivalry, Crawford and Shearer's professional paths were intertwined with moments of mutual respect. Both actresses navigated the challenges of an industry that was often unkind to women, particularly as they aged. Shearer's retirement from acting in 1942 and Thalberg's earlier death in 1936 marked the end of an era for MGM and provided Crawford with an opportunity to redefine her career. Crawford's departure from MGM in 1943 and her subsequent resurgence at Warner Brothers with films like Mildred Pierce, 1945, for which she won an Academy Award, underscored her ability to reinvent herself. Meanwhile, Shearer's legacy at MGM remained intact, her films continuing to be celebrated for their elegance and emotional depth. The crawford shearer rivalry is a narrative of two women who, in their quest for cinematic success, face the complexities of a studio system that pitted them against each other. Their story reflects the broader challenges faced by actresses in Hollywood's golden age, where talent and ambition often collided with the realities of a male-dominated industry. The Friction with Mercedes McCambridge in the landscape of Hollywood, where stars were meticulously crafted by the studio system, the rivalry between Joan Crawford and Mercedes McCambridge during the filming of Johnny Guitar, 1954, stands out as a clash of titanic personalities. While factual details about their interactions are limited, the tension between Crawford and McCambridge has become the stuff of Hollywood legend, emblematic of the intense personal and professional rivalries of the time. Johnny Guitar was a film that defied conventional genres, blending Western motifs with psychological drama and strong female leads. Crawford, already a legend by the 1950s, was cast in the lead role of Vienna, a saloon owner with a mysterious past. McCambridge, known for her powerful voice and commanding screen presence, was cast as Emma Small, Vienna's antagonist, fueling the film's central conflict. From the outset, the production was rife with tension. Crawford, protective of her status as a leading lady, reportedly felt threatened by McCambridge's talent and intensity. McCambridge, for her part, was unafraid to assert her presence, leading to a clash of egos on set. The dynamic between the two actresses mirrored the on-screen conflict, adding a layer of authenticity to their performances but also complicating the filming process. Director Nicholas Ray found himself navigating a delicate balance, trying to harness the tension for the film's benefit while preventing it from derailing the production. The set became a battleground, with Crawford and McCambridge's rivalry spilling over into their interactions with the crew and other cast members. Rumors of sabotage and off-camera confrontation circulated, though specific incidents were often shrouded in hearsay. One apocryphal story suggests that Crawford, in an effort to undermine McCambridge, manipulated scenes and dialogue to diminish McCambridge's role. Whether fact or fiction, these stories have contributed to the mythos surrounding the film and the legendary status of their rivalry. Despite the off-screen drama, or perhaps because of it, Johnny Guitar emerged as a critical and commercial success. The film's unconventional approach to the Western genre and the strong performances of its leads have earned it a place in cinematic history. The rivalry between Crawford and McCambridge, while fraught with conflict, ultimately contributed to the film's intensity and depth. In the years that followed, both actresses continued to forge successful careers, though their paths seldom crossed again. The friction between them during Johnny Guitar remains a fascinating chapter in their storied lives, a testament to the complex interplay of artistry, ambition, and personality in the golden age of Hollywood. Rivalry with Barbara Stanwyck The golden age of Hollywood was not just defined by its glamorous productions, but also by the intricate web of relationships among its stars. Among these, the dynamic between Joan Crawford and Barbara Stanwyck offers a nuanced view of rivalry and camaraderie in an industry rife with competition. 
both actresses celebrated for their indomitable spirits and formidable talents, navigated their careers with a blend of cooperation and contention. Stanwyck, like Crawford, rose from a challenging background to become one of Hollywood's most respected actresses. Their careers overlapped in numerous ways, leading to inevitable comparisons and competitions for roles. However, unlike some of Crawford's more notorious rivalries, her relationship with Stanwyck was marked by a mutual respect that underscored their professional interactions. The two stars shared the screen in Strange Cargo, 1940, a film that highlighted their ability to work together despite the undercurrents of rivalry. Off-screen, they moved in the same social circles, attending the same parties and events, which was common among Hollywood's elite. Yet, even as they vied for similar roles, there was an acknowledgement of each other's talent and contributions to the film industry. Crawford and Stanwyck's relationship was emblematic of the complex dynamics between women in Hollywood, where mutual respect could coexist with professional rivalry. This nuanced relationship challenges the simplistic narrative of female rivalries being purely antagonistic, offering instead a glimpse into the collaborative spirit that often prevailed. As their careers progressed, both actresses faced the challenges of aging in an industry that prized youth and beauty. Their ability to adapt and continue working, often in roles that broke stereotypes and pushed boundaries, speaks to their resilience and the depth of their craft. In later years, the competitive edge of their relationship softened into a more reflective appreciation of their shared experiences and struggles. Conflicts with Greta Garbo the relationship between Joan Crawford and Greta Garbo brings into focus the unique dynamics of Hollywood's studio system where stars were often pitted against each other yet sometimes found unexpected common ground. Garbo, the elusive Swedish siren, and Crawford, the quintessential American movie star, represented two very different facets of cinema's allure. Their interactions, both real and imagined by the public and press, underscore the complexities of star relationships during Hollywood's golden era. Garbo and Crawford's careers intersected at MGM, a studio known for its stable of leading ladies and its penchant for creating competitive environments among its stars, while direct conflicts between Garbo and Crawford were less documented than Crawford's other rivalries. The studio system's inherent competition fostered a climate where every actress was veeing for the best roles, directors, and scripts. Crawford herself was acutely aware of the competition, famously quoted for her admiration and envy of Garbo's talent and the roles she received. Garbo, known for her reclusive nature and desire to avoid the Hollywood social scene, remained an enigmatic figure to many of her contemporaries, including Crawford. This distance likely fueled more speculation about their relationship, with the press and public eager to pit the stars against each other in a battle of personalities and talents. Despite the competitive atmosphere, there were moments of professional respect and perhaps a recognition of the challenges they both faced as women in a male-dominated industry. Crawford's transition from silent films to talkies and her efforts to reinvent her career in the face of aging paralleled Garbo's own challenges, including her eventual retreat from Hollywood. The narrative of Crawford and Garbo's relationship is less about direct rivalry and more about the broader context in which they existed. It speaks to the isolation and pressures faced by Hollywood's leading ladies, the studio system's role in fostering competition, and the public's insatiable appetite for drama and conflict among its stars. Their story, while lacking the overt confrontations of Crawford's feuds with other actresses, offers a window into the subtler forms of rivalry and respect that existed among Hollywood's elite. It underscores the complexity of navigating fame, artistic ambition, and personal identity in an industry that often viewed women as interchangeable parts rather than individual talents. Tensions with Loretta Young Both actresses, celebrated for their beauty and talent, navigated the complexities of a competitive industry with grace and determination, yet beneath the surface of their professional successes there simmered a tension reflective of the era's challenges and the personal convictions that shaped their careers. 
Loretta Young, known for her ethereal beauty and strong moral principles, often found herself at odds with the more openly ambitious and assertive Crawford. The industry's penchant for pitting actresses against each other in the public eye only served to exacerbate these tensions, casting their rivalry in a light that was as much about their differing approaches to their careers and public personas as it was about any direct personal animosity. The competition for roles between Crawford and Young was emblematic of the broader struggle for women in Hollywood to assert their agency and navigate the expectations placed upon them. Crawford, with her rags-to-riches backstory and relentless pursuit of success, contrasted with Young's more reserved and principled stance, offering a glimpse into the diverse strategies employed by women to succeed in an industry that often sought to limit them. Despite the competitive undercurrent, Crawford and Young shared moments of mutual respect and professional admiration. Their paths crossed in various professional settings, from studio lots to industry events, where the veneer of rivalry gave way to a more complex relationship characterized by a shared understanding of the other's struggles and triumphs. Crawford vs. Hedda Hopper Crawford's interactions with Hedda Hopper, the era's most formidable gossip columnist, were fraught with tension and mutual wariness. Hopper wielded her pen like a sword, capable of bolstering or tarnishing a star's reputation with a few carefully chosen words. Her column, widely read across America, was a source of both fear and fascination for Hollywood's elite. Crawford, ever conscious of her public image, understood the power Hopper held. Their relationship was a delicate dance of mutual benefit and underlying rivalry. Crawford sought to maintain Hopper's favor, aware that the columnist's support could be invaluable but also resentful of the control Hopper exerted over the narratives surrounding Hollywood stars. Hopper, for her part, seemed to relish her role as the gatekeeper of Hollywood's most tantalizing stories. She was known for her conservative views and often targeted stars whose lifestyles or political beliefs she found objectionable. Crawford, with her tumultuous personal life and string of high-profile relationships, was a frequent subject of Hopper's columns. While Hopper could be a staunch ally, her favor was not easily won or kept and Crawford found herself navigating a complex relationship with the columnist throughout her career. The dynamic between Crawford and Hopper was emblematic of the broader power struggles within Hollywood. Stars, despite their fame and public adoration, were vulnerable to the whims of those who controlled the media narrative. Crawford, with her keen understanding of Hollywood's power dynamics, engaged with Hopper in a way that was both strategic and fraught with tension. She hosted lavish parties to which Hopper was invited, shared exclusive tidbits to curry favor, and at times directly confronted Hopper over unfavorable coverage.